Biden 2024 is off to a rocky start. Democrats are less than enthusiastic, and the bad headlines are piling up as well. His campaign is said to be, quote, slow out of the gate, with donors showing a lack of enthusiasm, and close allies are having to persuade the rich that Joe is not too old to run and has vigor. Yikes. And now we're learning it was Dr. Jill's fault. She is apparently the one who convinced her husband that it was a good idea to run and helping Joe, quote, get to yes on running for re-election at 80. Not a big surprise, given that she is his biggest cheerleader. He's not done. He's not finished what he started. Look at all that Joe has has done, has accomplished. One of the Republican candidates is calling for mental competency tests for those politicians over the age of 75. What do it's you think ridiculous. about that? Ridiculous. Look at what he's doing. His energy level, his level of passion. You're going to dance. Yeah, no, you're going to come <laughs> up with <laughs> No, but I would love that costume. <laughs> come on up, Joe. <laughs> But Democrats are falling in line and saying Biden is ready to go. Joe Biden is agile, is capable. Incredibly sharp, incredibly probing, incredible command. Let's not forget, more Americans voted uh, for this president than any other president in history. People are on fire uh, for the Biden-Harris ticket. Polls will go up, polls will go down, uh, but what won't change are the facts. I don't even know how to start, but Dana, I'm going to start with you. Okay. His energy level, the level of passion. The fact is that Jill Biden is the one who wants him to run, and I think that she signaled at uh, some Easter egg role uh, before he announced that he's not done yet. Yeah. He's not done. What hasn't he done doing? Well, remember, that follows the State of the Union address where he kept saying, finish the job. Yeah. And then I think it's very curious. I do not understand the, the communications decision for wanting this story out there. So if you, are, if you want credit for being influential, you would put it out there, I guess. But you're also the one that could be the one to blame because it, Biden for the whole time has been saying, I intend to run, but you know, like I'll, I'll tell you when I'm ready. Now we get the story that she had to convince him to. And I'm glad that she's his biggest cheerleader. I think that anybody who's married should have that in their relationship. That's great. But I also think that there are just some things that the president is going to have to do himself. It is not enough for people who like him and are friends with him or who work for him and are in positions of power because of him to tell us he's agile and that he's sharp and that he's on his game. Americans have to see that for themselves. We do not see it. Remember when he came home from Ireland and he took the rest of the week off? Mm -hmm. um, part of what he did then is he re recorded that video that announced his reelection. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, since then, we've seen him at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes, that, that was great. But then they always tell these stories about, oh, well, he only does events from 10 to 4. And then they called a lid last week on one of the mornings at 9.45 or 10.45 right. in the morning. You don't even have to do that. You, you can just say, you know, the president's busy, and then you can call a lid at 4 o'clock like any normal human being would do. Jesse, is it that she's, like, relishing a role hanging out at the Super Bowl in the Women's Final Four? She's always in Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, and, you know, why give that up for a, for a dreary life on the beach in Delaware? I'm with Jill. You do it for the perks. You got the <laughs> chef. You got the jet. I don't know. I, she obviously planted the story because she's had yeah. bad headlines. Remember, she kissed Dougie Fresh <laughs> on camera. She called Hispanics tacos. None of the fashionistas ever say nice things about her outfit. So she was dying for good press. She thinks this is good press, but every wife counsels her husband. That's nothing new. I was on paternity when he announced his reelection, and I didn't even hear about it. It did not break through at all. A lot of other news broke through when I was away. <laughs> that didn't break through at all. And think about that. The guy made no splash, and it's probably because he took all the drama out of the announcement. Remember the last 10 months? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, probably going to run. I'm just, I am just haven't announced it yet. Okay, that's exciting. And yeah. then he told Al Roker in an Easter egg role he was going to do it. So when he finally did it, everybody was bored. Permission to make an analogy? Yeah. Joe Biden is like a nose tackle. He goes in there on short-yarded situations to plug holes to prevent Donald Trump from getting into the end zone. That's it. 
He takes up space, and he's there on fourth and goal. And then he waddles back out onto the sideline. The guy is not an offensive star. He's not dynamic. He's not going to put points on the board. He's basically a wall around the White House so Donald Trump can't jump in. He doesn't do anything. He just sits there and blocks. That's it. And that's how he's always been. I'm not shocked he can't raise money. If you were a Democratic donor, would you give money to Joe now or would you wait until next year? I would wait until next year. Okay, I'm going to ask you since you're, you're a new mother. Now, a senior Biden advisor describes Jill as a wife, a mom, a nana who does everything she can to defend her family. What kind of nana doesn't recognize her seventh grandchild? I asked and answered. I, no one thinks that it's okay that this kid is being, oh, sorry, I just hit your cup, uh, is yeah, being ignored. you took ignored. the lid off it. <laughs> oh, there's another lid. Lid at 521 here on the five. <laughs> no one's going to defend that. It's just, it's silly at this point. It seems like it would have been an easy win. People's families are weird and strange, and you just say, my son had a kid with this woman, and this is my seventh grandkid. So okay, that's but, the, but the question really is, why not admit it? I know what you think they, they should do. They obviously made a calculation that it was not going to be helpful for them. Or Hunter said, no, I don't want this. I'm not doing it. And they tiptoe around him. They have coddled him through all of this and just said, my son is perfect. My son is perfect. Instead of talking about it in real terms that the average American can understand. We have a son who struggled with addiction. He's overcome this. Okay. Can I, can I say something about politics, though, since I'm just repeating myself for that? To Jesse's point about, you know, he's just a wall keeping Donald Trump out, I obviously think he's done a lot more than that, but it is important that he is the gatekeeper for that. And there have been a slew of polls that came out this week from Republican pollsters, from Echelon Insights, from WPA Intelligence, people who've worked for Ted Cruz, like real conservatives, that show Donald Trump losing to Joe Biden in every single swing state and on a national level, but Ron DeSantis winning. And there's a chorus of moderate Republicans, even people who were pro-Trump before that are just saying, we will lose if we renominate Donald Trump. And he is the front runner right now by 30 points on average. And Joe Biden being the gatekeeper, keeping Donald Trump out of office when it looks like he's going to be the candidate is what Democrats care about most and why he will have all the money that he needs and all the support that he needs for this race. Greg, how would you wrap this up? Well, one thing, just to uh, Jessica, Joe will lose to Trump if inflation doesn't get under control or we go into a recession, he will lose because you're going to need somebody with an economic sense that J Joe Biden doesn't like. I'm workshopping a joke, though. I was thinking of, can I try it out? Yes. Why is Joe Biden like a bad open casket? Why? Because you have to keep calling a lid. <laughs> See, I don't know. I'm not sure. Calling for a lid? I don't know. I love the so-called positive adjectives that are used to mm -hmm. describe Joe. Like, he's capable. It's like something you'd say about somebody who just had a head injury. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's capable ever since, I mean, the head injury. It's surprising. Or, you know, he's, a, he's very uh, agile for a man with no feet. Mm -hmm. It's something you would say. It's, right. So it makes you think he's incapable and bumbling just by mentioning those. But I got to talk about what the most amazing thing about Dr. Jill is how truly amazing Dr. Jill is. I mean, not a single negative story ever appearing about her. How can somebody be so perfect, right? You know nothing about her. Judging by the media, she is Joan of Arc to Melania's Lizzie Borden, right? Yeah. And it's totally predictable because the media always protects its own, and Jill belongs to them. And I don't blame them. She is a doctor, which is great for Joe in case of a medical emergency. She can read to him. <laughs> yeah, she's got an education degree. I'll get 100 emails saying, why didn't you say she's not a doctor? She's not. But she, no, she is a true she's education, education doctor. doctor. Yeah, ahead. The Biden administration <laughs> is sticking it to blue-collar workers everywhere in the name of their green radical agenda. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.